friends and welcome back to my home welcome to my sewing corner I haven't been able to use this sewing corner in so long whenever I did my closet perch you know where all those clothes came the claim came to my sewing corner and I didn't use this corner for sewing for that entire time so I haven't made anything in a really long time and I miss it and I've been seeing this Shein ad for this really really cute like cottage core they call it a dress but it's an apron. It's like a flowy linen apron. It's got embroidery on it. It's got big pockets. It's so cute. But I refuse to buy from Shein. I will not shame people for buying whatever they need from wherever they need it. But I would highly recommend that you not shop at Shein. Of all the places that I have ever researched fashion-wise, it is the worst uh, chemical-wise and production-wise and pay-wise and worker-wise and like it's so bad it's very very bad so obviously because I don't shop from Shein but today we're gonna make it because I need a cozy fall thing to do <sighs> even though it's not fall it's still summer it's hot I hate I'm tired of it I'm tired of summer just gonna say it I am NOT a summer girly I know lots of influencers love summer I hate it summer's not my thing so I just want a project to get me into fall and something that I can do fairly quickly sewing wise. The embroidery, theirs is machine embroidered. So that, I don't know how long it's going to take me to embroider. But I do have some uh, cute ideas. I'm not going to copy the embroidery exactly. I'm going to do my own thing. I think maybe I'll add mushrooms. And it's all second hand. Every, all the materials I'm using except for my thread because second hand thread is not always great um, but all the materials I'm using are secondhand. I got my fabric off of eBay, I got my embroidery thread from the thrift store um, and that's really all I needed was just some linen and some embroidery thread so let's get into it. But on the topic of not purchasing from Shein, let's chat about today's ethical, sustainable, and all-around wonderful sponsor, Sonda Floor. I have been wearing Sonda Floor dresses for over three years now and I've loved every single item I've ever had. I'm especially partial to the classic wrap dress. As a mom with an ever-changing body, the wrap dress has been absolutely essential to my wardrobe and changing body as it fit me through pregnancies, breastfeeding, weight gain, and loss, and it just works. Their Okiotex certified linens and wools are sustainably and ethically sourced and all of the details are natural and biodegradable, including their packaging. One of the things I always love about Sonda Floor is that they use no plastic in their packaging so they're all recyclable and reusable which is really important to me. Not only do Sonda Floor dresses feel good to wear, they're good for the environment too. They've just launched their fall winter collection and when I say that I audibly gasped over some of these prints and cuts. Please, this poppy red wrap skirt, <gasps> I need it, I love it. If you would like to check out Sonda Floor, you can use my code Christina15 for 15% off and make your wardrobe and the planet an all around better place. Now let's get into making this apron. <music> So the first thing that I did was measure how long I wanted the apron to be and then what my waist was over a dress because I want this apron to be able to tie over a dress. If you are triggered by taking measurements of your body, you can just use a string and cut it to the length that it needs to be and you're good to go. My apron was, I made it 30 inches long because I knew I would need some seam allowance and I just cut this two yards of linen all the way across side to side because I wanted it to be as full as it could be. Uh, then I took the remnants and I marked again about five inches for my waistband. Um, five inches wide and I'm gonna cut it all the way across again because I will need the extras to tie uh, Originally, I was going to just cut it to my waist measurement and then I realized that I needed the ends to tie the apron so um, Then I folded the rest of it and I cut another very long strip But this time I just folded it and cut it five inches wide 
and then here you can see me cutting out squares for the pockets all of this is just i'm just eyeing it i took the last piece and i measured how long i wanted it to be for the waist so it's kind of just approximate you don't even have to measure this part you can just kind of hold it up to your body and then i did iron some things but i just got this iron from the thrift store and it is a 1960s iron and i made my husband plug it in because i was a little bit afraid that it would shock me uh so i sacrificed him to the task oh it didn't it, it worked fine but um yeah so i ironed all of my pieces and then i realized that linen really wrinkles very fast The only thing that I really ironed uh, that needed ironing was the waistband. And here you can see me putting it around my waist so that I can see where the ends meet. Or not the ends, but like where it meets around my waist so that I can then mark that with some pins so that I know where I need to put in my skirt for the apron. Now, originally I was going to have this apron wrap all the way around me, but I decided not to because I wanted it to look a little fuller. Here you can see me hemming, not hemming, turning in all of the edges of the skirt panel. Um, I do this on all of the edges except for the top and I am doing a rolled hem and I am pinning it. And now you can all the colors. That's yay. Yeah. A yay yeah. one, like. or all the ones, or pink one. Yep, you get a pink one. Good job, Mommy. You pink a pink one. And you certainly do not have to pin it if you are full chaos like I am, but because linen is. Like it's simultaneously very easy to manipulate, but it's also a little bit stiff, so it just made it easier to make sure that I got all of the ends. And something that I forgot to mention earlier is that I cut out my fabric with pinking shears to make sure that it did not fray because you can see the cut edges that um, were there before I got it. The cut edges are fraying a whole lot, so I used pinking shears to cut my fabric. Again, you don't have to do this, especially if you're going to finish all of the edges like I am doing, but it just makes it easier. It makes it cleaner to do pinking shears and then to do the rolled hem around all of the edges that are not sewn into anything. Now you can see me taking the waistband and putting the whole thing together. I decided to pin it all together because I'm not using a pattern. I need to see how things are put together before I actually sew so that I know what I have to do first. So here I am pinning the skirt to the waistband so that I can make sure that that looks good. And then I have to pin the bodice to it. It's not a bodice, the apron bib. And then the thing that was kind of confusing me was where to put the shoulder straps if I wanted it to cross in the back. And I realized I could just pin the shoulder straps to where the skirt ends and it would work out really well. This was just my preliminary, do I like this? Do I like the width? I wanted to test out how wide I wanted the apron bib to be. Um, and I did end up making it a little wider than this, but I'm really glad I did the steps so that I could see the whole apron before I sewed anything together. So then I sewed the edges of my waistband up and <laughs> uh, you will see in a minute that this was actually a mistake. I should have waited, but I sewed the waistband all the way up and then I trimmed the edges because they were the raw edges that somebody had done and I flipped it inside out. Here I am using a crochet, uh, it's a knitting needle, a, a knitting needle to turn it inside out. And I did the same thing for the shoulder straps. Same thing where I just trimmed up the edges so that they wouldn't fray on the inside. And then I turned them outside out with a knitting needle. And then I took the apron bib and I had figured out how wide I wanted it to be and I regret, this is the one thing that I regret, I forgot to do the rolled hemline, edge line. What is that called? 
not call it the hemline, but whatever. I forgot to do the rolled edges on the bib, apron bib, so I do have some raw edges on the inside there, but I hemmed up all of the edges that I didn't, that were going to be visible, and then I ironed out the waistband, and this is where you will see my mistake in sewing it all the way up because I realized after I had sewn it up that I actually needed to, to make an inset skirt. So I went back, I marked where I wanted the skirt to be, and I ripped out the seam in between those markings. Um, if you do this, you can just sew over a little bit the, the, the seams that you've ripped between and it will, it will work out just fine. But ripped out those seams and I pleated the skirt into where I wanted it to be, setting out on the inside of the waistband um, and making the pleats as full as I wanted them. And here you can see I'm watching my friend Stephanie in her latest video, but anyway, uh, then I sewed, I don't know how to explain this, I sewed the skirt into the waistband with it flat so that you're not sewing both edges at once. Uh, and then I sewed the top down. Now you can do this by hand if you don't want to see the stitching, but I do not enjoy sewing by hand unless it's decorative, like embroidery. So I did it with my machine. Uh, it works perfectly fine, like you can do it either way, but I just prefer to do machine sewing. It's quicker, it's easier for me. I don't sew in a very, I, I don't sew in a straight line if I sew by hand. So um, I sewed the skirt into the waistband and if you have cut a waistband piece that has two open sides, like on either, uh, on the width, you know, if it's, if it's two pieces that you're sewing together, you can also inset the bib, but, um, mine was just folded over, so I did not inset the bib, I only inset the skirt, uh, but here I am sewing on the apron bib, and then I pinned on the straps where I wanted them to be, uh, it, it's so straightforward, it's so easy, you really don't have to measure a whole lot. Ground beef and ground cheese, cheese. Ground cheese? And that was it for the apron. Now let's get on to the embroidery. So I looked at the reference photo for the Shein apron and I decided to just do my own thing. I did actually sketch out kind of what I wanted and as you will see later, the sketch that I made, I only really followed the mushrooms and one flower and then I just did what I wanted to do. But if you are not good at making up what you like, it can be a good idea to sketch it out first. I just used a pencil uh, and you can't really see it. Once, once I was done, most of it had rubbed off. Here I am looking at my colors, trying to decide what I wanted to use. And I, I picked out this color palette and then I completely forgot that I had picked out this color palette and I went and did my own thing. Here I am looking at my Better Homes and Gardens. I think it's Better Homes and Gardens or Good Housekeeping sewing book for some embroidery stitches. And I'm using the split stitch to make them mushrooms because it kind of ends up looking like they're fuzzy and I really liked that. And I, I literally just Googled how to embroider mushrooms and i found something that i liked and while we were watching over the garden wall because i want it to be fall um i embroidered some mushrooms i think that these are my favorite thing that i put on the apron i think they're so cute and they're so easy to do if you are looking for sort of beginner project embroidery, this one is an easy one because all you do is come up on one side, push your needle back through, and then just come up through the stitch that you just made. It's to split the stitch, which is why it's called a split stitch. And you just kind of follow a mushroom shape. I did get sick, so this is the second day of embroidery where I just sat in bed. I tried to sit in bed all day and do embroidery. I didn't end up sitting in bed all day because I'm bad at it, but um, here you can see me working on the first flower stems that I did and adding some lavender flowers. After I did the mushrooms, I realized that I wanted my color palette to be a little bit more dusty and not as strong as it had been, so 
I chose this lavender color and I ended up being really happy with it. getting sicker <coughs> and I I'm sure I look like a mess but I'm determined to finish this and get it out this week so sitting in bed I've got my tea and I've got my embroidery and I've got my laptop and we're gonna watch a movie I'm gonna make myself rest this is the one thing about doing this is that I'm really bad at resting but this is making me sit because I know I need to get this done. I I should be editing right now, but I need to get this embroidery done. So it's making me sit and just chill out and actually embroider and do nothing else and rest my body, which is what I need to do. So I'm going to add like a plethora of flowers and ferns and greenery in general. I just kind of want it to be a little bit more wild than the original one. So, uh, we're just gonna do the thing. So for the rest of it, I, if I needed ideas, I kind of just Googled what I wanted to add and I ended up adding some ferns. This you can Google fern stitch. Uh, whenever I got stuck and I knew I wanted to add some more, I just googled like embroidery wildflowers and I looked at the pictures and tried to replicate them with my knowledge of embroidery. I grew up doing this so I did know how to do a lot of it, but we sat and we watched over the garden wall and my toddler um, quote unquote helped me or as you can see here she sat in my way <laughs> while I did some French knots. And I remained in bed all day after this. And as finishing touches, I added some clover and then I was pretty much done. And let's get to the reveal. Alright my friends, and that is it, and in true chaos fashion, I completely forgot to film an outro, so I will just do my outro over this footage of me picking blackberries because it's cute and I didn't get to use it anywhere else, but let's talk about the project and the cost and just my overall thoughts. So cost-wise, yes, it did cost me more to buy the materials than it would have to buy this thing off of Shein. Um, on Shein it's $16.99 and I paid uh, $40 for the fabric and probably like not even a dollar for the rest of the things that I needed. The embroidery thread, I found a giant bag of it at the thrift store for $2.50, so I want to say maybe each color cost me less than $0.10. Cents. Um, I could have made it cheaper if I had wanted to and if I'd had the time 
to hunt thrift stores for a linen tablecloth or a sheet or something like that but I had a very specific vision in mind for how I wanted this to look so I was willing to pay a little bit more for the fabric that I wanted that I also knew was good fabric. Do I think that it was worth it? Absolutely. I am so happy with this apron. It is like probably the best thing that I've ever made. I love it so very much and I'm so I'm just so in love with it and I would highly recommend if you want like a beginner friendly project to make an apron like this. You don't have to measure anything, you just have to know how to like turn under a hem and make a few rectangles and put them together. You don't even have to measure your body, you can just kind of eyeball it if you want to. Um, it's such an easy thing to do and as far as embroidery goes, I think that it's very easy especially if you have a book or you could just Google it and figure out how to do it on your own. Overall, I'm really happy with it. I think that it took me about eight hours. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. We'll just insert very quickly like I did at the beginning. Don't shop from Shein. Shop from literally anywhere else. Shein is not a good company to shop from. There are so many things that you can look up about Shein that will convince you and I will let you do that on your own time. But if you were going to listen to anything that I say, just even if you're on a low budget, which I absolutely understand, and I want to emphasize this, like, we have been on such a tight budget that we had to go to food banks. Like, we, I know how that is. And I still would not shop from Shein even then. I would go anywhere else. <laughs> but, um, I just want to emphasize that because it's really not a good company to support. But speaking of like good companies to support, I want to thank Sonda Flora for sponsoring this video and being so lovely. They are a company that I will work with long time because I believe that they are literally making the planet better with their clothes. I do understand that they are not in everyone's price range. Um, they are somebody that I do save up for though. And the first thing that I ever got from them, I saved up for a year to buy because I wanted to support a good company. And I feel so lucky that they now want to work with me. I believe in working with companies and supporting companies and promoting companies that are making the world a better place and I think that Sonda Flora is doing that. Uh, so if you want to check them out and you can afford it right now or in the future you can use my code Christina15 for 15% off. And that is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful or inspiring to you. Um, I really hope to do a lot more sewing on my channel and this was a really fun return to making things with my own hands. I am so happy with the apron and I hope that you love it too. And that is it, my friends. I hope as always that you are feeling safe and loved and wherever you are, you know that you are valued and a wonderful part of this world. And until I see you again, have a beautiful day and thank you for watching. Bye.